This is Geometry Worksheet 1-14 Solutions. I'm still at home for um, this lesson, so I thought I would take the liberty of making you guys a video instead of just having a static answer key online. All right, so number one, construct the line of reflection for the figures below. So I get to choose any corresponding um, pre-image and image. So I'm just gonna, I can choose A, A prime, C, C prime. I'm just gonna choose B, P prime because it's a little bit clearer to see what's going on. B, B prime. Any of these will be the same answer. So um, you need your compass, of course. So let's bring that guy out. And I need to move, uh, that's not how I move you. I need to move this compass so that it is touching here. Let's move you down. So it's touching, let's start with B prime. One end over here, and I need this to extend at least halfway at least halfway. It could be the full distance, um, but this is a good distance for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a tick mark somewhere out here, halfway-ish, and somewhere out here as well. It's okay that it goes over other stuff. And then I'm going to rotate this around like that, move you to B, and rotate you until you intersect here and intersect right here. All right, and if I make a line between those two intersection points, that will be the perpendicular bisector, which is what we're after. And that perpendicular bisector through those two points is the line of reflection. So there it is. All right, on to number two. So let's drag you down here. Again, same thing, only no letters, so you just have to figure out what goes to what. I'm going to choose my line. I'm gonna make it skinnier so that it is a little bit more accurate. So boom, boom. Um, these two look like that they match up from here to here. Um, so I, I don't know which one was first, which one was a pre-image, which one was the image, but whatever. Um, I can't keep making that mistake. I need to move my, <laughs> not that, I need to move my compass to put one and right it needs to be exact right there and this needs to be at least halfway i mean if it's the exact distance that's even easier eh, close enough so um, i'm doing all this in blue that's okay so um go about halfway so i'm estimating halfway is about here and perpendicular bisector i can say it, it's estimating somewhere in this area so i'm going to go ahead and make a line and i want this line to be skinnier it's on the skinniest setting. I can't do anything about it. All right. Oh, huh, that's weird. It now it got skinnier. I guess it's because I went to a different mode. Hmm, interesting. Somewhere down there and somewhere down here. All right, and then I switch to the other point and see if they intersect anywhere. Hey, hey there's one intersection point and oh, I have to make that one a little bit farther, darn it. Bad estimation skills, Mr. Sindel, try again. Oh, come on, come on, All right. When I let go, it moves just a little bit, please. Ah, good enough. Move this one. Okay, now we have a correct intersection point. And if I make a line between those two, then I have the line of reflection. And yeah, eyeballing it looks good. Moving on to number three. Again, same thing, construct the line of reflection. So when I make the line of reflection, I'm going to choose any two points that look like that they're image and pre-image. Very thick lines, so I'll have to be careful. I'm going to choose this corner here and this corner there. I could have done this corner here and this corner there. It's whatever you want to do. I like nice long lines because they're easier to see. So there is my line between here. I'm going to do the very tip to the very tip, like that. And <laughs> going to move you using that tool. Okay. So I'm doing the very end of the line, right before it touches the end, that way I'm, I'm exact as possible. All right, so move you, sure, that's a okay distance. It doesn't matter because they will intersect regardless of the distance as long as it's more than halfway. So come here, oh, oh no, what have I done? Oh, I can undo it, perfect. Um, same distance, I'm going to rotate this a little bit down so I can grab it right on the edge. Oh. Come on, right on the edge, perfect. And I can see that this is going to intersect right there. Oop, I don't need to intersect that much. I just need a little tick mark there, and a little tick mark down here. Oh, I barely got it. 
and I make my line in between those points. So, whew. ooh, it's a little bit off. Let's go ahead and go like that, and just move the line. Hopefully, this will be correct. Yeah, good enough. Yep, so that's the line of reflection. It looks good. Everything is everything. Check that out. I, mean, I can do more than uh, two points, two pairs of one pair of points. I can do another pair of points to double check, but I'm pretty confident in my answer. Let's go to the next page. All right, so we're on the back now. Reflect it. Okay, so this is the harder one. This is like on the back side of the notes. So to reflect it, that means I need every single vertice. So this one is a challenge. This one's going to be even harder than the classwork. And I hear you groaning, and I mean, we have to get our practice in somehow. So here are my points that I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose, let's make it, no, no I think that is fine. We're going to choose. So this is going to be one point, another point. I think we do need that point because that has to be a line. We have to know where it intersects. So these, each of these you need to reflect. That's six of those that you need to reflect. Oh boy. Um, I'm going to circle those here just so you can see what's going on, but I don't want them circled so that they don't get in the way of my construction. Here we go. So again, I need my compass. And I'm going to make sure that everything is color coded as much as possible. I'm going to do the very tip to be consistent. And again, the idea is you want to intersect at least, darn it, move you down like this, to intersect at least more than one point. So that looks good. Uh oh, that wouldn't intersect. So a little bit less. Good, right there. So take mark right there, scroll down, take mark right there. All right, so then I need to switch to that intersection, and then I'm going to make um, the idea is somewhere halfway in between here and here, out here as if it was a perpendicular bisector, which is right about there. Switch to this intersection, right there, and I make a new intersection. There it is, cool. So if this point was called, um, I'm just going to call him A, that means that this intersection over here is A prime. And we're going to be doing this over and over and over again. So what color do I choose now? I choose red. I'm going to call this point B here. So I'm going to do the very corner of B, just trying to be consistent. I'm doing like the outside edges. This needs to be big enough so it intersects two times. I don't want to be exactly right there. Um, let's go. Oh, it needs to be almost at the very end of it though. Sure. Okay. So I'm doing the very end of the line there. And, oh yeah, this is a nice big circle, so we'll get this one nice and exact. Cool, and then I will make this intersection right there, somewhere out here, halfway. This intersection right here, I think I'm going to have to scroll down, hopefully I can scroll down. Scroll down, yes, nice. And this is going to come up here, ooh, just barely nicked it right there. Cool, and let's label that. It's going to be the corner, so it's going to be B prime. Cool. Next color, we, I'm not sure, let's do one black. Uh, let's call this point C. That means I'm doing the very edge here at C. Um, let's go ahead and move you, sure, we'll keep this distance, that's fine. There and, oh, nope, that's not gonna work. It needs to be shorter. Um, it's defined by this outer edge right here. Oh, nope, nope, I'm gonna drag you right there. So that looks good. Let's make a tick mark right there and a tick mark up here. Ooh, it looks really close to that point. In fact, it's almost exactly that point. Hopefully that doesn't confuse anyone. Um, it, it doesn't matter. It's two random points on that line. Let's go ahead and move it to the intersection right there. Cool. Somewhere out. Oh wait, not out there. It has to be halfway in between here. So it's going to look right down here more. And intersection here. And I need to make another tick mark for this outside intersection. That's going to be called C prime. Next color. Um, I'm, I don't know, was this fuchsia, purple, something like that? Um, this is going to be called, I'll do D right here. So I'm going to do the very inside part of D, which is right here, and it needs to intersect this line at least two times. So I'm thinking probably there and. Oh, not quite, a little bit smaller. 
right, sure, right there, and right here. Cool. So here's my first intersection. Come on. There it goes. Uh, close enough. It needs to be somewhere about halfway in between those two. So I'm thinking somewhere right there. And of course, I need to move this center of the circle. And there's my intersection point. Let's call that D prime. Uh, two more. Um, thinking of colors. Sure, what's this color? It looks okay. A, B, C, D, and we'll call this E, which is funny because this whole letter is an E. Let's go to the outside corner right here. And it needs to intersect twice. The hardest intersection point is going to be um, towards the bottom here. So scroll down just a little bit more. Ooh, that's going to be tricky because it's such a small circle. Hmm. This one is going to be really difficult unless I extend that line. So I'm choosing to extend this line. This line right here, let's extend it. Let's make, um, I want this line to be just as thick, a little bit too thick. Let's go right there. And I'm going to change this to a color so we can see what's going on. So, oh, that's too bad. I'm just gonna make it black, whatever. It'll look like it's the same line. Extend that line. That looks like it's extended, right? Now it makes it e much easier to handle. So let's come back here to U. And what color are you? Perfect. Still working. Right at the corner. And now the intersection is easier because I can come all the way down here. So let's make a tick mark right there. Tick mark up here. Switch this center to that intersection close enough. I want it about halfway in between, somewhere down there. Move our compass, scroll down, and come up here. Boom, there you are. We call this E, so this is gonna be called E prime. All right, and finally we need our last point. Running out of colors. I'm just gonna choose this one, sure. Um, this is going to be called F. F will be really close to the line, won't it? Um, so it doesn't really matter how big the circle is. I'm going to just make it like this. Sure, right about somewhere where we haven't really made a line before. Right there. Looks good. And somewhere down here. You have to make the sound effect. It just helps you. Um, Coming back up here to where we made that first intersection, it needs to be somewhere about halfway. You know it's going to be roughly around there. And finally, last but not least, our final intersection. Where do you intersect? Oh, I barely got it. It's right on the edge, right there. All right, that was F prime right there. Okay, and you can kind of see the shape lining up now. Um, let's go ahead and move this guy away. You know that A is connected to B, which means A prime is connected to B prime. Let's go ahead and make um, our lines, our lines here, black, and we'll make it hopefully just as thick as the original line. Oh, that's pretty darn close. If I had to go a little bit thicker, is that even better? Oh, that's too much. I'll go like this. And remember, we did the outside corner, so A goes to B. A a goes to B, and then B went all the way down to E, so B prime goes all the way down to E. I'm trying my best to make it look the same. And then E prime goes to F, those are the outside corners. Uh, close enough. And finally, C prime goes to D prime. Perfect, okay. So there is the reflected image. And if you just stand back and look at it, you would say, wow, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. It was a lot of work to get there, but there it is. And five, it seems like we're doing so much more work. We're doing the same thing as we did in number four, but with a triangle, why are we doing so many of these, Mr. Sindel? You'll realize here that you're using one of the properties from the notes, um, and you'll see that in a sec. So if I reflect A across the line L, Oh no, I can't do that because if I come back here in the notes, where are you? 
Um, the fun fact over here, where if I am on the line of reflection, and I guess I can actually flip over to the notes that I filled out. If I'm on the line of reflection, <laughs> where are we? If I'm on the line of reflection, then I am at the same point. So that means A is A prime. That means, and I can label this here, this point is also A prime. This point B is also B prime, since it's on the line of reflection. In fact, this question down here, what is unique about the location of the images A and B, the location of A prime and B prime, they're at the same point. You can even type that down here. I wonder, can I type and be faster about this? Um, not that big, let's go to maybe 12. They are at the same point. Perfect. And maybe bigger, let's go to 16. Good enough. So, um, the only thing that you need to do is C. You need to get a C prime. So you have to do it one last time and then we're done with homework. So let's come here. Put the center of our compass on C. We need to intersect this line L. Oops, let me do that. This line L at least once. So let's come over here. Sorry, not once, at least twice. So I'm going to intersect right here. I want a cool color, cool color. I like blue. It's a good color. Intersects once there, twice there. And then I move my intersection, my center of my compass to here. Ooh somewhere right out here. And finally, move to this intersection. Our final tick mark, just barely there. That means that this point right here is C prime. And my final step is to make lines that go from A prime to C prime, C prime to B prime, and B prime to A prime, which doesn't make sense because that line already exists. So coming to my line tool, let's choose black. My width is right there, so I go from this A prime, which is the same as A, to C prime, from C prime to B prime, and from B prime to A prime, which you don't need to do. So there is the reflected image. And that concludes all of the homework.